Sadly, my weather centre that I've used for many years has started to malfunction and deteriorate due to the long periods of use over the years. Not being able to get sensors for my old system, I went on the internet to have a look to see what was available. Part of my criteria for the weather station was to have all the sensors that I had before, plus Wi-Fi and a solar panel to stop me from having to change batteries every few months. The weather station of interest to me was the Bresser 7-in-1 Solar 6-Day Forecast Pro. Now this is a Wi-Fi weather station which also is included a 5-year warranty which a lot of other weather stations will not give you. You need to register for this. I will leave links in the description below for this weather centre and any other relevant links that may be of interest to you. Ordering the weather centre was pretty straightforward. I did order it through Bresser UK but it was posted out from Germany. As you would expect the packaging was absolutely superb. There was no damage in any way shape or form with the box or its contents. One thing that I really like about this weather centre is that it is mostly pre-built. There's only one or two items that need to be added to the centre unit. The instruction manual is very easy to follow. It's in good English and it explains everything. I would advise after opening up your weather centre to sit and read through the manual from beginning to end. It will make life a lot easier for you as you progress to put up your weather centre. All the nuts, bolts and washers are made from stainless steel. They do provide you with a small Phillips head screwdriver but you may need a bigger one and an adjustable spanner when you start to assemble your weather station. The inside console is powered by a switched mode power supply. This does have an option of the European plug or the UK and Ireland plug. In my case I will be using the 3 pin option. Don't worry you can't get this wrong it will only fit in one way. Simply line it up and push the supply and the plug top together to hear a click. The input voltage can be between 100 and 240 volts AC either 50 or 60 Hz with an output of 5 volts up to 1 amp. The brackets and mounting pole are made from thick wall plastic. With a combination of the brackets and the pole you will get various options that you can use to mount the sensor unit. The colour console is 215mm wide by 176.5 high by 27mm deep. On the front and on the top can be found function buttons. On the back there are two extension legs that can be pulled out to enable you to stand the console on either a table or a shelf. Backup battery access, various setup buttons, wall mount hole and power input hole. We will leave the screen protector on for now. With previous weather stations that I've used in the past all the sensors were separate. With the Forecast Pro Weather Center, all the sensors are an integral part of one unit, which includes a solar panel. The solar panel protector will stay in place for now until the indoor display has been powered up and the backup battery has been fitted. As mentioned earlier, the center unit was pretty much built. One item that you will need to fit is the water collector funnel. The sensor unit is made from thick walled plastic and weighs in at 757 grams. The quality of build is extremely strong and has a look and feel of quality. The data collected from the sensor array is temperature, humidity, wind speed, the wind direction, rainfall, UV and light intensity. The wind vane is located directly above the wind cups. Both of these move very freely. Under these is the antenna that transmits at 868 MHz the data back to the display unit indoors. Above the solar panel is the UVI and light sensor. The solar panel is used to charge the internal battery. A bubble balance indicator can be found on the top of the unit. 
The rain collector funnel can be removed, simply twist it in an anti-clockwise direction to take off and in a clockwise direction to refit. This will give you access to the tipping bucket. This will need to be clean from time to time. Below the wind vane and wind cups, the radiation shield and thermo hygro sensor is located. Next to this is the red LED indicator and reset key. The rechargeable batteries storage area and mounting bracket for the pole. There is one procedure that should be followed when you first power up your system is that the display is powered up first. You wait till the indoor temperature is displayed before applying power to the sensor unit. It is now time to remove the protective screen on the display unit. The display console does not have any batteries fitted inside. It only relies on the AC power adapter that was provided. The only downfall for this is if the power is removed, you would lose all your settings. To save losing your settings, a small button battery can be fitted into the unit. This is an option extra and it is not provided. You will need to provide the CR2032 battery if you want to save all your settings when the power has been removed. Connect the display console power jack to the AC power with the adapter that was included with the kit. There is no on and off switch, it will power up immediately after the power has been connected from the AC power supply. Before proceeding, ensure that the indoor temperature is displayed on the console. Once the temperature has appeared, it is now time to connect the rechargeable battery on the sensor unit. Due to the construction of the sensor unit, I found it much easier to have the wind vane and wind cups hang over the edge of the table as shown. This made the sensor unit more stable when removing the cover and connecting up the rechargeable battery. The rechargeable battery is part of the kit and is provided. During transportation, the battery is not connected. You will need to do this. When connected, the battery is charged up via the solar panel. The plug should only go in one way, the wires red to red, black to black. It is suggested in the instructions that you use some sealing tape or self amalgamating tape to seal the plugs where they join together to stop any condensation getting into the socket and plug. The tilting angle of the solar panel can be adjusted vertically from 0 to 60 degrees. To adjust the panel loosen the screw until the gears on the opposite side appear. With the gears disengaged, rotate to the angle required and re-tighten the screw. The teeth will then re-engage. It is now time to remove the protective cover from the solar panel. The red LED next to the reset button should flash approximately every 12 seconds. This will indicate that it is sending its data to the console. You should start now seeing the data sent from the sensor unit on the display. To enter the date manually, press and hold the set button. Use the up and down arrow keys to change the required numbers. Pressing the set key repeatedly will change from date, month, year and time. This can also be set to change automatically when connected to your Wi-Fi. With the screen display, all the relative information you see on the screen now will be available to you. Some of the options will take a little longer while it's gathering data before displaying. There are up to 15 different weather icons that are provided according to the weather conditions forecasted. Depending upon where you're going to put your weather station sensors will depend upon the configuration of the mounting poles that you're going to use. With the two brackets and pole provided within the kit, you can mount the center unit either vertically or horizontally. One of the brackets can not only be fitted onto a pole, but also onto the side of a building, the side of a wall or on top of a wall. You would need to provide your own screws to do this. For me personally, I will be using a long pole, which is approximately 40 millimeters in diameter. This will fit neatly into the clamp on the bottom of the sensor unit. Inside the kit of parts you will find some small square rubber pads. 
These will be stuck on the inside of the clamp unit as shown. These are to help prevent the centre unit rotating on the pole that it's clamped to. On the top of the unit there is an indicator N. This is to denote that the unit has to be pointed in the northerly direction. The balance indicator, the small bubble, should be in the middle of the circle. Now that might be a bit difficult to see when it's up at 20 feet. I do have a little trick here that might help when we're fitting the pole. I'll show you that later. The pole that I'm going to use to mount my centre unit is a 5 meter length by 40 millimeters in diameter. For ease of working on and fitting I've rested the pole on a fence and a small shed. Remember that the wind vane and wing cups will be a little delicate and I'd imagine easily broken. Using either a compass or a compass on your mobile phone, find out where north is as the unit will need to be pointing in that direction. The location of the sensor unit is very important. It needs to be in an area well away from structures, buildings, walls, trees, anything that's going to influence the operation of each of the sensors. The sensor unit needs to be in an area where it's easily accessed as from time to time you will have to bring it down and clean it. The transmission range between the sensor array and the display console is approximately 150 meters or 450 feet line of sight. Any structures in the way can reduce this distance. At this height the balance indicator cannot be seen. In my case, a spirit level can be used on the side of the pole going up to the array. If the pole is vertical on all planes indicated by the spirit level, the balance indicator on the top of the sensor array should be level. After the sensor unit has been successfully fitted, come back to the console and check that there is communication still between the console and the sensor array. If you do not already have a ProWeather Live account, create one, then log in. On the ProWeather Live main page, click on the pull down menu, which is denoted by the three little minus signs. Click on Edit Devices. In Edit Devices page, click on the Add on the top right hand corner to create a new device. This will generate the station ID and key instantly. Don't forget to write down somewhere the station ID and station key for later use. Click on finish to create the station tab. You will need to fill in the required information on the screen. The station ID and station key will automatically put in for you. You will need to put in the rest of the information. This will be the device name, device MAC address which can be found on the back of the console. The elevation, latitude, longitude and select the time zone in the station tab. When completed click confirm to save the settings. Use a PC or Mac, smartphone or tablet to connect with the console through the Wi-Fi network setting. I found it easier with a laptop and it worked better for me. To put the console into AP mode press and hold the sensor stroke Wi-Fi key for 6 seconds to enter into the AP mode manually. This will denote the AP flashing on the screen of the console. Connect your Wi-Fi to the console's PWS Wi-Fi network. The network will start with PWS. Open that and connect it. Once connected, enter the IP address into your internet browser address bar to access the console's setup web interface. In the settings, enter the router SSID the security type which will be WPA2, the router's password and the station ID and station key. Next we set up the weather server connection. Enter any information or data that is required. Make sure you check it first, make sure it's all right before clicking on apply. Log into your account on Pro Weather Lives dashboard. If all is well, you should see the data from your weather station appear on Pro Weather Live. If you do have other accounts for Weather Cloud or Weather Underground, these can be put into Pro Weather Live to feed data to those accounts. To do this, click on the Menu tab, click on Weather Server. 
Select one of the servers from server name, enter station ID, station key, and then tick on the square box. At this time now, I can use ProWeather Live, Weather Underground, or Weather Cloud to send data to, and use those websites if required. Having the ability to send the data to each of these weather websites for me is essential. Another nice feature, ProWeather Live has an app for both mobile and iOS that can be used where you can get your weather data no matter where you are through your mobile device. And for a quick look at the weather conditions now, we've always got our console that we can have a look at. If you need them, there are some optional additional sensors that you can use with this weather station. For its ease of setup, functionality and use, I find that this weather station so far is one of the best that I have used. If you are in the market for a weather station or thinking of replacing your own weather station, this is well worth considering. I hope you found this information of use to you. Thank you for watching.